Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to call the order of the work session to turn that tourism board at 9.01, Wednesday afternoon. Goodness, is that me? That's Camilla. Camilla, move your mic up a little bit so you're not hitting it with paper. I did hit it with paper, I'm That's sorry. Okay. 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 Let's all hit it. Man, they're so loud. They are sensitive. I want to get every word we say. Even bad ones, right? Right. <laughs> review, the, review the fall grant applications. So we had two um, applications for this cycle, one from Skateland, uh, from Jamie Primer, and she unfortunately is not, I mean, it's not unfortunate, she's not here, because she just got married this weekend. Mm -hmm. So she's on her honeymoon. Um, so she really wanted to come and present and, you know, plead her her request, uh, but she wasn't able to make it, so um, I did include the application in your packets. She is asking for um, 3000 let's see, $4,500. Her total projected advertising budget is $4,230, um, and a proximate portion of that budget dedicated to the 50 mile radius is $3,000. What she's doing is celebrating one of the oldest running links with the original hardwood floors. She's, be, she's going to be having a gigantic skate-a-thon uh, at Skateland with different competitions. And, um, and she's just really excited about this 80 years anniversary. You can review it. Um, the opportunity was made to um, grant applicants to present, but since she's not here, we won't be voting on this until the regular meeting in two weeks. But I, I'd like, I mean, I can speak to Jamie just a little bit because, I mean, frankly, Skateland's been a lifesaver for my kid mm -hmm. because it's one of the few places that's really accessible that you can drop them off. They can go skating, it's a healthy environment, it's social, and there's so many kids in this town that are either homeschooled or do other kinds of schooling, so their social environment in a school, out of school is really, is very limited, so Skateland really provides that, and you know, it's a nice place for kids who maybe don't fit into sports or aren't at the right age for whatever sports, and you know, so, I mean, this is a special event for her, but I do think she provides a really wonderful opportunity in this community for youth, and especially teenagers, because there's nothing for teens, well, really. Well, yeah. she'll also be inviting uh, individuals from outside the community to come in and participate in some of these competitions. So, skaters from Pueblo, Denver Springs, and that area. So. It does make it a tourism event because she is inviting people from outside the community. And I've really got to say that people don't really realize this, but I get families all the time from Angel Fire and Red River. They come to Trinidad and they say, you have a theater, you have a skating creek, you have things that I can do with my kids because we don't have that if it's not skating. I really, it's amazing how many youth, you know, people that have eight to 10 year olds and they want to do something for the weekend, they just drive from that area. And I always get a big kick out of it because I, I know so many of them now. They come up for the weekend like, you know, some people might go somewhere else for the weekend just because they can. it's a safe town that they can do a bunch of things with for 8 to 10 year olds when you start thinking about the Skateland and, and uh, the theater and maybe stuff that people locally don't realize, you know, what a treasure it is or the, that they don't use. No. I always see activity over there, so I... You know. And I think it's really good for us to advertise. Yeah. And I hear a lot about it. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot about it. Yeah, and I think good, good positive things. So. I agree. I mean, yeah. Jamie, Jamie's done a fabulous job. Yeah. I think also moving this into a regional thing for her is a big step because I don't know that she's done much of that before. And so I think that is really good for our she's, community. She's hung in there. Yeah. She, she, she has hung in there with a lot of people. I know it's hard. It. She has hung in there. And one of the things is for as long as it's been here, you know, it's always been going, you know, it's always been. So it's a good thing to see it keep on going. Yeah, and because of, you know, the Samoa family, 
Bronco yeah. Billy, if everybody remembers. Yeah. Uh, how we love Bronco Billy, right? Um, is there is there some historical significance to that floor or any part of that building that we could also? They, they painted over the most significant thing. There was a forest scene, if it, you can remember. When I was growing up, there was an entire forest scene in that thing, and it was like set up around a, an ice skating rink. So oh, that's that's that's, cool. that's what was in there at, at, when I was growing up. But they painted over that. But one question I want to ask: you, What's the the balance we have left in the grant funds? Oh, well, that's a good question. I do not know, but there is enough to cover these two grants. That I did check, but I don't know the exact number. Do you know, uh, Cheryl? A few seconds. something to let her know, like I said, just to, to be yeah. that ring around. There, there may, uh, and I knew uh, Billy Zamola really good. He used to park his, his Jeep under my canopy at the cleaners, but he was an unbelievable skater. Really? Uh, he was, he was, he was unreal what that guy could do on a set of skates. But he grew up in the arena, you know. And then his mother had a little cafe in the front. You could stop there and she would. She made the best hamburgers, you know. So uh, she always had that going when they had it open. So it was, it was a pretty good little setup. Yeah, Billy was so special. Man. Yeah. He was so special. He was kind of fun to watch, you know, like for World Series and yeah. Yeah. games and stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, statistically, he knew it. And then what would be really cool is he would go to a concert. Nobody else could do this, yeah. but Billy could get them to bring a guitar in, whoever was famous would sign that guitar for him because yeah. it was Billy. <laughs> he gave me a, a Muhammad Ali Sports Illustrated signed autograph. There, with that was yeah. Billy. Yeah. There was a, one time, one time me and Eli and Billy and a few others, like 30 years ago, sat in uh, right outside the dam and we rode the river all the way to uh, JR's East Main. And when he got out of that river, he was jumping up and down. He was so happy. It was the happiest day. He was just brought so many, so much joy to people. So one thing on, on this application and, and, and is he has uh, $3,000 outside a 50 mile radius. So mm -hmm. that's what we, we'd yeah, be working on. Yeah, that's what I that, yeah, we had 85. Is that right? okay with you? So that yeah. was, at least it's 12. Yeah, it's interesting yeah, it's listening to y'all that grew up here right. talking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a similar place in Amarillo that I remember. You know, what was it? You went to meet twelve thousand is our balance. Twelve thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And Marty, uh, uh, three thousand dollars is what she was using outside a fifty mile radius. Yes. So that's what we would go on. Is the her ask is is forty five. Uh, the portion that she's using outside the fifty mile radius is, and, is and which that's what that's, required. That's what we would work we'll on. on mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'll put that on the agenda for next meeting. Women's is supposed to happen. Uh, it's December tenth. Yeah. Okay. We'll be okay. Next. Wally. How's everyone doing? Good. 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 Um, so yeah, we're actually getting ready this weekend for the second Spaghetti and Westerns Festival. Um, last year's event was a success, I think. Uh, Sai came along for it. I, um, we had a good turnout. Uh, it was very well received. We got a lot of comments from people afterwards. A few things that they didn't like, but we've actually done our best to correct those things this year. Um, and like I said, the overwhelming Feedback was positive. Um, we've gotten a little bit more sponsorship support this year. Um, we got a grant from the city of Raton for $5,000 uh, for marketing and promotion for it. Um, we, from last year's event, we produced a bunch of really cool video um, 
short video advertisements for it. Um, all together, we have 10 minutes and video ads promoting Trinidad Raton and the train between it that we've put on YouTube, Facebook, dispersed around places like that. Uh, this year, we hired on a professional marketing guy to create a fun little radio advertisement for us that we've been running in Boulder, Denver, um, and then here locally. Um, we have produced another program guide, which we uh, have already been dispersing around on the internet and have passed out around here and in Raton. Um, we, so far we've sold, I believe, 170 or so tickets for the whole event, and I think we'll get a lot of last minute, more local people that uh, come to the door of the spaghetti dinner. Um, last year, I think we had a little bit over 200 for the dinner itself. Um, then we're also kind of just branching out a little bit with our programming this year. Um, last year we had two nights of like Western movie roasts, and this year we're only having one night of doing that. Um, and then we brought a show from Austin, Texas that is called A Fistful of Tango, where it's um, a pianist who comes and they have an old a uh, silent Western film that they've changed all the dialogue in it, so the story is about tango music. And then uh, they have this live pianist play tango music over the whole hour-long program, and they encourage people to get up and dance and stuff like that. Um, and he's just somebody that heard about this festival and reached out and said, if you'd pay for my plane ticket and give me a place to stay, I'd love to come and perform at it. Um, we're also adding a drag show this year of, uh, that's just Western themed drag show as one of our more late night shows. Um, it also timed out this year that Main Street Live is doing a Western melodrama at the same time. So we've worked it out with them that one night will be all of our festival um, attendees go over to Main Street Live to see that show. Um, we're also doing some kids programming this year. Um, we've bought 25 tickets for the Trinidad Youth Club and tomorrow or Friday um, they're actually going to take all the kids over to Raton on the train and then pick them up in uh, uh, vans and drive them back over here and then they're going to have a spaghetti lunch and watch a western movie at the youth club. Um, we've also been working with Zia Youth over in Raton where they're going to show two animated um, kids kid friendly family films in the Isabel Castillo Theater while we're showing the other Westerns in the other theaters. Um, we also, this year, last year we just showed kind of classic, well-known Western films, and this year we did a national uh, marketing campaign to get um, Western filmmakers to submit independent Western films, and we got eight submissions, and we'll be showing all of those during the weekend, and we also invited all of those filmmakers to come out, and I think all but Two of them are sending representatives, and those are coming all the way from, we have one in South Carolina, one in Arizona, um, one in Texas, uh, and uh, several in New Mexico, and a couple in Colorado. Um, so I think we've done a pretty good job of getting the word out a little bit more this year, um, and I think it will continue to grow. And, um, and also I think last year was a success, not only just that we had people come and do it, but the, the biggest example that I have of, like, I think was the biggest success of this was um, Cody Cool, who is running the museum, or running his show at the A.R. Mitchell now. This is actually the event that brought him to Trinidad. Um, I had been reaching out to him for a couple of years, being like, hey, you got to come out, check out the A.R. Mitchell Museum. You'll really love it. It's your style. And he'd always say, like, I'll come sometime. And then last year, I hit him up and I'm like, we have free tickets for you if you come to this event. And he ended up coming out, falling in love with the area, bought that house on Colorado, um, ended up setting up his uh, exhibition over at the A.R. Mitchell. And actually, I just talked to Allison yesterday, and they have $74,000 more in revenue this year than last year. And I think that's largely because of the um, assistance that he's giving the Mitchell and not only displaying his artwork, but also bringing new contemporary Western artists into the museum every month. Um, he has a gallery space in the museum, if you guys didn't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Allison does a great job. I, she doesn't I didn't get a uh, grant application. It's inside it's your It's inside your package. Well, it's inside this book. Yeah. yeah, they tried to hide it. Yeah, usually it's with the other grants. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, and so that's just one of the biggest goals that we have of this, is we really make it a point to 
do personal invitations to Western artists, Western filmmakers, uh, Western musicians to really just show them how cool this area is and how much um, it could be a highlight of the work that they do. Mm -hmm. um, so is the plan that this um, is going to be an evolution of like a Western arts, multimedia arts festival? Is that kind of, like with this filmmakers, I mean that's, that's pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? And um, other Western artists, musicians, things like that, is that kind of, mm -hmm how it's gonna, you're, you envision it to evolve? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's that's kind of why it's not just the Western films this year. We're also doing the Western melodrama, the drag show, just trying to spread it out to be more than just film, even though film is kind of the main highlight. And then the spaghetti thing is just kind of a fun niche thing that also kind of highlights some of our local restaurants, food, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of a, I think unique idea that is fun. We do these goofy um, graphic illustrations that kind of play into it and um, just trying to continue to build our reputation as a place for Western activities and uh, for people to come and visit. And then um, the other thing, in addition to the filmmakers that are doing the submissions, we have been working really close with El Raton Media Works, who is trying to, or actually, not trying to, that is building the studio in Raton. They actually are getting $3 million in federal funding this year um, to build out the Kearney into a multimedia production space. And uh, we actually had them personally invite about 20 filmmakers from around New Mexico, Colorado, and some outside of the country as to have this be a chance for them to come check out this region and see the potential for doing more films here. What kind of communication are you having with the Colorado Office of Film, Television, and Media? They, they sponsored it, and they, they, they came last year, yeah. and they decided to sponsor it again. They will not have representatives this year, um, but I'll, one of their main people is out on maternity leave right now, so I think that's part of the reason they are stretched in with their staff. Um, but yeah, they came last year, they wrote me how much they liked it, and um, did give us some funding again this year, so. Why do you get to enter any uh, help from Raton? Uh, uh, they they gave us a $5,000 uh, both last year and this year, they've given us 5000 for it. Okay. And the way that we kind of do it is they don't have the rule of less than 50 miles, uh -huh. so we've been kind of spending their money on advertising more locally, and spending the money that we receive from you, if any, on advertising outside. This 1021 that we gave you $2,500, that was this year, right? That was last year. That was last year. You didn't come earlier for any money. Not for this one. No, not for this one. I came for the chief, the comedy festival. Comedy festival. Yeah. Okay. Who's producing your drag show? Um, it is a group of drag queens out of Colorado Springs. Uh, Are they cowboy drag? They are for this one. They're actually, they're actually going to be here for two nights. Um, and the second night will just be whatever they want. But for this one, we said that it had to be like a Western yeah. theme. So, so it's not the guy that produced them at the, at the Main Street Live? No, it's another person from Cars. Well, there was yeah, one yeah. at Main Street Live that was just, um, it was a riot. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was so wild. funny. Are, are you, are you, are you going to yeah. be there in drugs? Yeah. No. Are they, doing it, are they doing it at Main Street Live? No, you have the No, no. yeah, the melodrama is at Main Street Live. So they're doing that show at the Well okay. Hotel and Tap Room. Um, so yeah, the way this one is working is we're doing the honky tonk dinner with country western karaoke. We brought a cowgirl poet from Durango that she's actually the woman that produces the Durango uh, cowboy, cowboy poetry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's gone on for a long time. Yeah, so she's the one, woman who produces that, and she's coming to do a performance here. And then we have that fistful of tango at the end of the uh, dinner, and then we send everyone across the street for the drag show at the well. Then we have honky tonk bands at the Trinidad Lounge. Then the next morning is the train deal where we load everybody up and then uh, show Western films in Raton throughout the day, put them back on the train. And then we're having a movie roast of the Wild Wild West over at Sexy Pizza. And then the Western melodrama at Main Street Live and then the other honky tonk show. And it's been moved to eight o'clock just to accommodate you. Yeah, in case the train's late. 
So I asked him to push it back an hour in case the train. Well, now you this know. year you have to be careful of one other thing. It's been early. <laughs> I, yeah, I, it was two and a half hours late last night. What so. time? Yeah, you could, you could do a raffle on yeah. the, on the, on the train time. time. Yeah, that's only good to think of for the future. <laughs> yeah. Guess the train time. Uh, well, do you have an itinerary of when all the events, uh, the major events, sort are going to take place? Yeah, it's actually on the front page. I didn't hand one to you three, so let me do that real quick. Um, but it's on the front page of the newspaper guide. That's right here. Right here. And then, yeah, we also have a musician performing during the lunch as well. So, yeah, it's packed full of a lot of activities for those two days, for sure. I actually brought a bunch to give it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? sales did you say you had? Um, about, we have about 160 take or 170 tickets out right now. What's your limit? Um, honestly, a lot, quite a bit more than that. The Air Mitchell, their capacity is actually like 700 people, and between the two theaters in Raton, their capacity is. I believe 600. So yeah, this this event still has a lot of room where it could grow, but at the same time, I think if you put 200 people in the Mitchell, it feels like a decent size event, especially with people moving in. No, no pack of the 170. Is there a lot of outside coming in? Uh, the only ones that I've tracked so far is the train people because we collect like all their information when they buy the tickets there, and of. This year we have 79 seats on the train, mm -hmm. and of those, 54 of them are from out of the area. Any other questions? Um, when you buy the tickets, well, you're selling tickets. The, the spaghetti dinner is what you're talking about, the 179 tickets, but the theater or the movie tickets are separate, correct? Are they, or is it all one weekend package ticket? It's a weekend package. The way that it's done is we sell one VIP type ticket that's the one that includes access to everything and the train ride and that's the one that we've sold 79 for and that well not quite 79 because five of those are volunteers about 20 of those were given away to like the filmmakers and stuff like that um, and then uh, then we have a pass that gets you access to everything except the train ride and then we also have individual tickets for the dinner, the honky tonk shows, and the movies. So, and we we sold some of the individual tickets, but the majority of these ones that are out are the full festival tickets. Well, for them. and last year I imagine a lot of those individual tickets happened at the door. Yeah, that, that's what I imagine will happen. Even though we we've sold we sold some of them, like I think we've sold like fifteen to just the dinner um, so far. Well, actually a lot of them came in yesterday that were for the dinner and for the drag show. And the drag show is actually free because it's a part of their um, LGBTQ um, celebration that they do once a month. And so the rule of us using that venue is it had to be free, but they're reserving a bunch of seats specifically for the festival guests. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, the individual tickets in here, I want to see where there's like a cost to them. I don't have a cost breakdown of the tickets on there. So, okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And yeah, if you guys get a chance, I encourage you to check out some of the videos that are out on YouTube and Facebook because uh, she did a really great job at producing some good videos that really promote our area. Who makes, who makes the spaghetti? Uh, my, my partner, Sierra, she makes oh, the noodles. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then we have different restaurants around town making the sauces. Who's doing that? The, the sauces, do you know? Have you got Mooses. I know Mooses, yeah. Sunset, um, Nana and Nano's. Trinidad Waffle Company, and then actually a restaurant slash sauce manufacturer in Boulder <coughs> heard about the event and reached out and asked if they could submit a sauce. Uh, well, yeah, Sierra really makes the noodles homemade. Yeah. I remember she was pregnant last year. Yeah, and she's got a seven month old this year, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Trinidad Office of Outdoor Recreation budget request, Jared? Actually, Jared was not able to make it today. He had a trip out of town that he had to, he was committed to. So 
I did send this email out to you, which is or he sent this email out to you requesting um, a change in the budget to help support to the Office of Outdoor Recreation. <coughs> the letters in front of you, what he's doing, um, he doesn't have a budget, basically. He, his budget is included in that of Parks and Rec, is that correct? So um, he has some marketing expenses that he has for several events that he uh, is promoting and will continue to promote next year. Uh, so he lined it out at 5000 for the Purgatory 4, 5000 for RAD, 5000 for the Gravel Grinding, Gravel Grinding Guide and Walking and Hiking Guide that is in production. So he just found a producer for um, the... And he's hiking. never come to do grants for a must. Yes, he did. Yes, he has. Okay. And why isn't he continuing? To do grants, the grant on our grant cycle. Um, he's asking for a, now, a so that it's available January first instead of having to go through the grant process. He would just like to see it added or be available, or the board to award it now. So he has, like I said, available okay. January first. So he wants to put it on our. Okay. I would, I would like to just see it as a, as a grant form. Yeah. You know, like we do all grant forms. I actually disagree. I think the city ought to line item money for him and, frankly, for Wally because they're city employees and have an events coordinator. That oh, also wait a minute. Yeah, that, that's, that's not, that that's, also, that's, yeah. that's bringing in the city because they're city, they're automatically getting their funding. But but I think, but I do think that, that, like, we've grown enough and there's enough events in this community and to have one person in the city who helps coordinate between all the private events. I mean, we can still have the grants for these smaller events and things like that. I think that's really within our purview and maybe mm -hmm. something. But I, I mean, I think an events coordinator, I mean, I it's not tough. She is an event coordinator. But, I mean, and you have a lot of grants. Do, we I have the money for grants. We have the money for grants. City events, private and public events. Yeah. I know, but you have a lot on your plate. And I think well, like it needs to be a an job event. description that I perform. That's yeah. what she does. That's what, what I do. do. That's what yeah. she but does. But you're also managing the tourism office and doing all of these other things. And maybe Am I failing somehow? No, you're not failing. I just feel like we've grown so much. But you're putting two people that work for the city of Trinidad, maybe the city of Trinidad should put it on their line. Well, item, that's what I'm saying. Not our tourism I'm, That's what I'm item. saying. I'm thinking that the city of Trinidad should be funding that, and that's kind of. And they, but, but I think still they should be able to come for grants from us for the advertising. I'm sure. I do believe that. But I, I think they need a budget for their events. For their. I mean, budget. I don't know. Well, maybe. <laughs> sorry, I brought this up on the but side. Here, here, it's just here, something here. that I've been aware of that it feels like. We've grown and we've grown, and there's a lot of events in the community. Right, and you might want the same, same yeah, so. thing, same thing that you're giving these two guys. Why? No, I. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I, I think outside of the purview of us as a tourism board, the city ought to consider giving. I mean, the Department of Outdoor Recreation should have a budget, like a working operating budget, and so should. Wally's events, those events bring people here. Right, that's part yeah, of economic that development. Um, Just to create this in perspective. Well, okay. The yeah. Trinidad Office of Outdoor Recreation is a city department. Yes. Okay. So they operate, they they are funded or they are they operate in conjunction with the Parks and Recreation Department. Okay? So because this department hosts events. The, the idea is to make a line item for those outdoor recreation events that fall under a city department. Does that mean, yeah. no, are you making does no, that make not, sense? No, it doesn't make sense at all because they're still going for grants for advertising from us. Well, it's not grants, it's they want it to be part of the budget. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which and, actually, and, and basically, basically it is because every time he does ask for money, we do give it to him. But it's under so, the right So I talked to the city attorney, and he feels that we should leave it as it is. He applied for a grant like everyone else does. Wally, everybody applies for a grant. This way, we keep it. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody's saying, well, you're giving preference to this person or preference to that person as right. making it a line item. Um, the way 
the way I was explained to it's it's best to keep it as a grant application so I actually have a question Wally for you around this like you're coming to us for grant money for an event that's this weekend so clearly that money's already been spent yep um, so how do you manage that like if we weren't to give you this funding what happens it comes out of my wallet I, I actually no money from the economic development right. department goes into any of my events yours is different. because I see that could be perceived as a clear conflict of interest that I'm putting money into these events that I'm producing. Um, so none of the money for the events that I put on comes so from the economic Your situation is budget. completely different than Jared's. Yes. Jared's doing his as part of the city. Yours is... is it's something that I would do even if I wasn't an economic development, but it's... My question is how can we become sooner for the money? What? How can we become sooner for the money? Um, because you only have four grant cycles a year. But you knew you were going to do it a long time ago, and you could have come even the second grant cycle. Honestly, I, I wanted to come the second grant cycle, but I just got too busy with my regular job. And because this is, I feel, which I have no problem with you, but I feel yeah. if we, that two weeks, there's been a couple people that you got, we got, we got. And, and the one thing about what I see with you is Today's you brought all your advertising to us. We know it's there. Yeah, we know you know. So, yes. so I, I, I have invoices with you, you know, and I and I I applaud that because you know, that's what we want. We want that outside advertising for these events, you mm -hmm. know. But as far as this one with Jared, I, I that's kind of the way I I see it. I don't know, Phil. Do you want any input on that? You come from City Council. <laughs> you know, as a line item, if him, he came to you for a line item and asked you to... I'll, I'll let you know this, is that there's some consideration going <clears throat> forward of uh, combining some of the boards and commissions, and in those changes, there might be some changes in that regard. So, mm -hmm. that so maybe I think on this one, maybe we should table this proposal. Well, then. you're not voting on it. You're just not voting on it. But I mean, as a discussion, because I think the Purgatory 4, I'd like to know actually how many people ultimately participated in that. And I think that's really Jared's event, not the city's event, right? And the Dirt Fest, like what, I mean, we saw what happened. That was great. Um, how much money do they put in it? How much are we promoting? I'd like to know like, what that specifically looks like. Um, the gravel grinding guide, walking guide. I think those guides, that's really within our purview. Like those are things we should probably be funding for sure. And then any new events and opportunities, I would like to know what he's proposing for some yeah, of those. Yeah, before we give him $5,000 for new events, I'd like to. I mean, I think we need, I mean, new events and things are great, but I think some of those ideas and concept concepts would be valuable to know before we make those decisions. Yeah, the one thing that you might consider doing is you know that there are a few events that are stable or staple events that we have in the community and that might be something that you might put in your budget for the following year mm -hmm. that we like the new Mexico, you have a red thing that's going on now mm -hmm. there's other events in town and that might be something that you might do a projection on mm -hmm. you know we do the, the projection is the amount of money that we have set aside and as they come and apply for these grants pretty much everybody's given Everything that they've asked for, and every time Jared's asked for something, he's always been given. Like if it would have been a grant in a grant form, now by satisfying these two grants that we have now, there would have been four four thousand dollars left. You know, but in March he could take care of everything in March. That would be, take care of his entire year. Yeah. If he had to, the grants for all three of them at that time. That would take care of all those grants. So, I that's that's kind of the way I. I think that that is an evolution of his office, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's only been in that for what a year mm -hmm. now. So now he knows the events he's planning to do for next year. Right. So he could do that, but in previous right. times he probably couldn't have. Yeah, right. so, you know, like, and that's and that's kind of the way I, that I was advised is 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 to leave it in the grant form until. Um, so do you want me to put this on the work session agenda for further discussion, and then I will have Jared... Yeah, I think it'd be better if he come and talk to meeting. us. I think, I think it would be better for us to hear from him. Okay. Do we know any progress, Mayor, on when um, they may make decisions about how to reconfigure those boards and if they're going to get budgets or not? We are going to have a retreat, hopefully sometime, maybe later in November, mm -hmm. uh, with council and... Uh, the directors 
Mm-hmm. And probably at least begin the concept. Well, I think that's a bigger, I think we have a bigger yeah, conversation yeah. than we could take care of here. I think, you know, always when you look at, you know, uh, some cities that do it right, you know, uh, it lets us on the way because they usually have had money to spend to figure out how to do it right. And I think it's a combination of everything that we're saying. I know that, uh, you know, I looked into Breckenridge and uh, even, at the state, even at our convention talking with other people that work in tourism offices and economic development and people that come there. I think it's a combination that the city and the tourism board fund things. So I don't know exactly how that should work. I think it's a larger conversation for us to say, we take $100,000 out of our budget to, to market local things, which is about what it is, maybe less, right? It is, no. And then, it, and then the city decides how much they take out of their budget, and then we lay items out. I mean, I think I, think I mentioned it once at the last one. I was looking that up, because I always like to see you know, other people's performa that are, again, have a lot more money for us to spend, so we go through it. And like Vail does something like they support between the city and the tourism board, they support 423 events a year. That because some of the events are very small events, like a poetry event. So they got the poetry event going on here, they got the juggling event going on here, mm-hmm. and they might have three or four or five things going on in Vail for the weekend. And then it's crafted which weekends are less, which weekends we know are busy weekends. In, in Vail, and it's crafted it to push people to do events on, on off times because Vail already has their time, just like Breckenridge. And I think it's a larger conversation for us. I don't know how to do that, Mayor. Um, I could get some other information from them and see how to do that. And then, and then you have a better craft. So if somebody wants to come up with a jewelry for us, a, a festival, the city already knows. Well, there's four of them going on on this weekend. Well, and there's something that goes along with women's wear on this weekend. So if you want to do it this way, and, and they sort of marriage up the events on weekends, and then the yeah. weekends they know it's going to be totally sold out because it's spring break. They might only bring music in on those weekends, but not have any, so that the people that are already coming in get entertained. And it's crafted at such a high level. Well, and like the car um, event was happening the same weekend as the Purgatory Four this year, and those are those should both be big events. I think Purgatory Four is very small, but you know, in the future, we should probably not have those on the same weekend. Um, you know, I mean, I know towns that I've worked with often have one person who coordinates all the events, helps work with all of them, that not also doing all of the tourism stuff and going to all of these other meetings and doing all of this other fantastic stuff that Marty does um, so that they can really, and then the city sponsors some events that become, that's, those are city sponsored events and then there's additional new events that individuals bring to a community and then they fund. Mm-hmm. Some of our bigger events, they're locked in their, their month. Mm-hmm. And as a retail merchant downtown, your July uh, June, July was pretty dead downtown. We had nothing going on. And it was very difficult. So then when August comes, Booth Fest, everybody picks up. You know, we all go in. But that June and July is pretty rough I think on us merchants on downtown. And it's not that it's not rough on us, it's just very quiet. We don't know what to tell the people coming into Trinidad because it is a very quiet time. June and July for us, and those sometimes those are bigger months that people are traveling, and we there was nothing going on in Trinidad. In no, you're time. talking about just this year, or was that ever done in, in past years? Well, as well, it's been that way too in the past year, but this year was really, really evident because. And that's pretty obvious, I it, think, because it, for this year, because of the gas prices, I, I attribute a lot of the travel. Well, to but gas. there was a well, lot of people in our town, and that's where it really kills me is. People say gas prices. Have you been on those highways? And these people are still coming into my store. I was moving at that time, and I was in the process of moving, and people still wanted in my store. I I said, oh, I'm in a mess. We don't care. And uh, they came in. But I had a lot of -of out-of-towners, and not only out-of-towners that are staying in motels, and many of them do, it's those ones that come out of Springs hit us hard, man, just for the day trippers. And... They're, they love they love coming into our shops. I had a lady from Lahana and Rocky Ford yesterday in my shop. Lahana is dead. They have nothing. They're closing down the street. Rocky Ford is picking up. But they love to come to Trinidad because all our stores are open. They're everything. There is not too many dead stores in our town 
compared to their counts. You know, the way I see it is that you're talking about the, those two months are, are kind of dead. It was. Dead. It was hard. I think the coordination of events uh, maybe needs to change somewhat uh, so that activity it's, is very busy or, and through the entire... It's, we, and, and all we can do is suggest because they, they, want, they want their weekend. They think they could do that weekend, which is fine. And all we could suggest is something coming in. I keep hearing everything that we're the ones that should coordinate events. I don't think so. So, but, but you know, a lot of these, lot of these organizations have set time as to where they want them. Right. It's, you know, we need to start trying to get some other organizations to get those two months filled with events. You know, that's that's what that's what we need. We that need was to, that was hard. And, and to and to add to those months, not to yeah. not for us to kind of reconfigure out as to when someone's going to have something. It's We've already talked about the, the you know, the, uh, the, the festival that I can't even think of. It. What's the one down in June that was at the thing? Come on, help me out, guys. The, <laughs> it's the anesthesia that's still pushing Which one? Which one? <laughs> Chamber, no. Chamber of Commerce. We already Santa discussed trails. that, so that's why no, we're that? Huge, but we were very Chamber much looking Santa forward trails. to Yes. Santa Fe is the second weekend in June. In June. Yeah. So. Car show, that's the first weekend in June. Uh, Fourth of July is the first weekend in July. But see, uh, none Trinidad of those... Blues Fest has, has been always those. doing uh, music festivals the last weekend in June, the last yeah. weekend in July, and July, and August. So there was three other, or two other music festivals proposed for last year that Kind of fell through, right? So there, there's some of that's on those five organizations to work to different promote themselves that were too. planned for June I mean, and July. None of you know the Saturday Trail Days was not promoted terribly well, to be honest, and it was kind oh, of yeah, there was a lot of complaints about it. Well, for well, the, you know, and I think years. I think they got the feedback from us, and and they're willing to change things. The Chamber of Commerce, you know, I'm, I'm you know, we're well, people, if people, if happens. you're not familiar with their town, we know where it was at, but if you weren't familiar with their town because it hadn't been held there before, people could have tried it. But there were, there were a lot of people coming to our town this year. There still is. I still have the many out of towners in my store and uh, coming in, and sometimes they don't buy. I, I agree with you. I'm not really mm, up there on the money market, but anyway, they come in and visit and say what a beautiful little town we have, and, and they love coming here, so we, we're still getting that. I'm still getting that anyway. So there are a lot of people coming to town. There is a lot of people on the highway, and there still are a lot of people traveling. So, and they are coming to Trinidad. And I, and I do think, like in July, I think the July 4th week, I think that's, that's a pretty good week because what's going on at Central Park, the fireworks show, you know, it's sad what happened this year, but you know, it, things happen, you know. But I, I do think that all of those months are filled with things. We just probably we need more is what we need. But, but I am really happy to say that all of the things that we do have going on in this community is a lot better than it was five years ago. So I do think that we're, we're moving forward, you know, thanks to Wally for what he brings to events to the city. You know, the Blues Fest, you know, the RAD, what Jared's bringing to the city. We're, we're growing. We're growing in that aspect, and, and you can see that, Bill. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I was thinking that one of the biggest things is that I think uh, maybe uh, more coordination with all mm -hmm. of the people that are doing events, uh, maybe early in the year, mm -hmm. so that everybody has an idea. I know that things, new things come in, but I think at least the well, <coughs> planning something for the next year, like January to early February. Some of the people that want to plan events all get together and see what they're doing. Right. And like Camille was saying, there's a lot of overlap. Sometimes they're not in the best place. But maybe by doing that, you can change maybe by a week or so. Mm -hmm. It can make a big difference. Yeah. But if you if you look at the calendar of, of, of the months, of the summer months, there's there's activities going on all the time. We just need to grow more activities. We need to, to be able to sponsor more activities. That's so what I'm I, saying uh, is that by doing that, you could see what mm -hmm. what is open. This, uh, this this board is a good indicator as to what is going on because of the grants that we fulfill. So the board does a lot of event coordinating. Right, session. you know. So so here here it is, you know. But I I I feel as a whole that 
what's going on in this community is better than what was going on five, ten years ago. Well, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I really think that we just need to keep on building on that. And that's well, one of the things that was evident, in, and Cheryl brought this to the council's attention, is the loss of sales tax revenue. That was close to a million dollars this year. So uh, that's, uh, you know, we're hurting in that regard. So we're having to watch our budget very closely can, this year. Can you tell where that's at? No. That was a question I was brought up, and she was going to look into it. But we discussion. knew earlier this year, we knew downtown was hurting. Earlier this year, when oh. it was slow. It was so badly slow. I would drive, I, on my road from the hotel every night, I always drive through town. I, you know, I reached out to you a few times and said, Mayor, man, you got to see what's going on downtown, because it was, it was quiet. seriously quiet. And if I was a cop, and I stood on the corner of the corner where I'm right now, I could give out at least five, six tickets a day for people burning Dewey's. Seriously? Go ahead, oh. In respect to Cheryl's office. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cheryl, Go ahead. That's, 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 right. Right. that's wrong with that, Cheryl. Um, the decline in sales tax is related to marijuana. So, no. yeah. That's where the, the big It's yeah. the biggest majority. Okay. Um, did you make so That's why the town looks so quiet, so people weren't going to do that. But there's not very much hope. Cheryl, there's just one thing I wanted to ask you is the the money for the kiosks and the and the van and we also need to wrap that van party. And um, that money I would like for it to come out of this now if we can make that application for for now because we could do it at one time in a year so it's it's not, it has to be in the year that we receive that what is it called the kiosk and the van so it will the kiosk come in this year okay. we don't know so it has to be budgeted for next year for next year okay so yes. in in what respect are we in trouble if we don't spend a certain amount of money we're, you're, you're, you wouldn't be, why do you mean in trouble? Well, I, I understood at one point if we didn't spend a certain amount of that money, something was The possible. reserves? Is right, that what the reserves. There's nothing written in now. No, no I, mean, I was. You I don't want to overspend because well, overspend. No, I, it went. was, it was, there was a certain amount of money that we had to spend be, because we hadn't been spending any money. Uh, basically, what he thinks is if we didn't spend... That's, that's what I had um, understood at one point. So I understood it wrong. So whatever you don't spend goes into your reserves. Your right. reserves are building up. Our reserves are building up. Right. Yeah, and if you look at that page, $459,000 is your reserves. Mm -hmm. um, we have I mean, money it could look to the pay. public that you're not spending, spending. the tourism dollars. Right. That, you know, you're just... Right banking on them. We're banking on Yeah. So that that could be that. But that perception. we could take the van out of the reserves. Right. So, so your big ticket items, you big can't Big ticket take item, we can take it out of the reserves. Right, right. right. So it's, but it's we good can't to take have it, a reserve we fund. Can't, but we cannot take it until it is received. Oh, right. right. So, then, so then do we propose now that those amounts be taken out for next year's budget? That's is that? We're, yes, that's what we're going on right now. And so, what yeah. is the deadline for that? So we, we've already presented the preliminary to council, but the first reading, we have to have it available to council, which would probably be the first or second, probably the first meeting of November. So if council. we, so if we wanted to up any of these line items mm -hmm. that we have, we can do that. Yeah, we need it before the first meeting mm -hmm. of council in November. Which okay. is what? Yeah. 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 Let's say the second. So I think like the grant should raise. Draft your letter, Cheryl. Mayor, with the loss of uh, with the loss of tax funds. Um, is, is the city considered, or is there any way that they could replace that um, tax monies with any other idea that's been brought to the table yet? That's a big question as to how to do that, because we just have to tighten our belts. That's basically what we have to do. Yeah. There are certain areas that I think that, and Cheryl, they did a good job with the budget to get a balance budget. Mm -hmm. The big caveat right now that we have is 
the unions are in negotiations and that maybe that's probably going to boost the budget up. So um, what we have to do after that is going to be difficult to deal with that. For city employees? Yes. Because we have, we have three unions in the, in the city that we look at. And, and I should know this answer, but I don't. On the current, uh, on the current voting that will happen in November, are there any uh, tax measures on there? I don't think there's any tax measures. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, I attended a policy meeting this last Friday. There were not any uh, taxing measures. Mm -hmm. There were others, but nothing in tax measures that we see. But it's just preliminary. Mm -hmm. uh, what ends up happening is we went through, I think, eight or ten different measures, maybe more than that. But by the time legislation moves through, the there's sometimes 600 measures that go through the legislature throughout the year, and a lot of them are introduced. Mm -hmm. Sometimes early, a lot of them are introduced way late. It just depends. So we don't know. And the CIP tax is still in effect for another year before it goes back to the voters? Is that it gets right? till 2005. What's the CIP? Uh, uh, the city, yeah, oh. in improvement projects. Yeah. Yeah. Until 2005? Yeah. Isn't it? 2025? 25. Okay. <laughs> you know what I did. I did. I just wanted to say. 25, yes. Yeah. Sorry. No worries. I'm living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> did we do that in five-year increments? I thought so. I thought we had extended that to 15 years. Yes. I would have to ask after. Sure. Yeah. I, I thought we had increased those at that increment. Okay. So, uh, so Cheryl, now that, now that we're, we are getting monies from most, uh, VRBOs or Airbnbs or whatever. Uh, how much has that uh, gone up this year? Could you track just the VRBO? I can. Um, I should have picked up that. But I think we received. We're. You know, Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, I, I forgot to pull that figure. It's doing well. Yeah. So. And actually, I, I saw something sometime back where uh, the VRBOs and RBNB, you know, that actually, for the size of the community that we have, those numbers could actually increase mm -hmm. because in comparison to other cities, mm -hmm. we're on the low end. Mm -hmm. yeah. So through um, second quarter of 2022, we've collected 23,000. So, um, third quarter is coming in now, so yeah. we'll know a little bit more. So I would be about 50, 60. Is it up? Is that up from last year? Sure. We, last year we received, I don't think it was on program last year, 27,000. So we didn't have to be over on their records then so last year. They started, I was starting in June. Yeah. 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 So we, we're, we're probably going to surpass that this year. We don't know how many beds are in the or because there's no tracking mechanism in the city, is there? Mayor? No. I thought, I thought I heard that there were like 60 some. Yeah, it sounds right. We had talked to a, a tracking company. Everything was going through really well. We had scheduled meetings, um, had two presentations, and then the guy just disappeared. We never heard from him again. So somebody, I think, may have taken over his position, has been sending me emails, but it's just not the time. I, I can't get to that. Probably February we might be able to look at that. But uh, yeah, when we had the time, he disappeared on us. Yeah, and just another note, it, it always it reminds me when sometimes we have these conversations, is the hotel, that, the Peace Hotel that's directly across the street from the La Quinta has all city services but still is owned in the county, so the city's not receiving any local city money and it's getting city services and it's not receiving any tourism tax. Is there any way that that could be rezoned so we could collect monies on that for the city? It would have to be more of an annexation. Yeah. Well, we, anytime you hook up into the sewer line, you were supposed to be annexed before that happened, wasn't it? I don't know about that. I couldn't. Yeah. Do That's the way I was when I built my home. That I had to annex my piece of property into the city before I could receive those services. And that's been a big question, you know, already. Like so with all of the mm -hmm. any of the Airbnbs that are in the mm -hmm. county, hotels are in the county. Mm -hmm. um, that is an issue because they do receive a lot of city services. Right. Okay, Cheryl. Sure. All right, so I did adjust the revenue. Um, we're just gonna say 50,000 for the new hotel. I don't know when it'll open. I'm sure it'll be more than that, but just to get us a start. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be uh, 
the end of January to mm -hmm. February 15th or so. Yeah. So just conservatively, we'll put in 50,000. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, actually, let's take a look at the projected. So we're talking about a budget adjustment because at this time, your budget is overexpended by $71,000 because it includes the van and the kiosk. Yes. Did we do a PO for kiosk? Uh, we have not done a PO for so, kiosk. So it includes the van. So you're going to overexpend. Hence the reason for um, the budget request to... Um, no, it's, it's overexpended without the van. My apologies. Um, I believe 112000 has been spent in advertising and publications and 68000 was budgeted. So... That being said, you're overexpended by 71,000. We have another 70,000 budgeted for mm -hmm. the van. And so we're going to do a budget adjustment of 110,000. Um, and I know that won't include the entire van, but at least it's going to show the auditor that um, you had enough funding available when you uh, made the request to purchase the van. If that makes sense. Because you don't want to ever overexpend what you've budgeted. So that's why we're going to do the budget amend amendment. Um, you're projected to spend 448000 which is um, 30, uh, what is it, the difference? 30165 uh, $34,000. So that's what I'm trying to say. The 110000 is going to cover what you're projected to overspend. Mm -hmm. Because what's gonna happen is that purchase order for the van is gonna come off the books and it'll be re-entered January 1st because the van won't come in until next year. Okay, so I'm sure that was very confusing because <laughs> I didn't make it, think that was tough on you, so I apologize. So, the idea behind the budget adjustment is to cover what you're gonna overexpend this year. And the overexpenditure that I can see is in advertising and publications. And I think you all knew that that was going to be overexpended, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hence the reason for the budget adjustment, because we want to make sure you have enough money to cover what you wanted to expend for 2022. Any questions? So now if we'll move on to 2023, I have a but adjusted 50,000 for the new hotel. We, we're probably very sure that it's going to be more than that, but we'll say 50,000. And then the rest of the line items I think were presented and you spoke about them earlier when Marty first presented the budget. There have been a little bit of tweaks here and there just to kind of keep on track with um, your current year. Um, Marty moved the, tur the copy machine into tourism out of uh, the Welcome Center. Um, there's notes on, on each item. And again, I think you had seen these notes before she presented this to me to, it, to present to council. But what we're looking at is in the 4800 department, which is tourism, I have budgeted the SUFA kiosk, the website management, and $60,000 for the marketer. So that's why your outside contract services went from 50 to 100,500. Okay. Is that going to be enough? And that's for outside services? Outside contract services. Right. Outside contract services. Okay, so, well. What was the ongoing cost of those, Marty? Do you remember? Ongoing cost of what? The SUFA? 2000 a year. For five years. Oh, you have four thousand. What's it four? Mm -hmm. Is it two thousand per kiosk? Yes, there you oh, go. That's mm -hmm. what it is. They don't, they, don't, they don't know how we're going to do that differently this year, and I know we we all knew that we would wanted to advertise more this summer, but if uh, if we spent one hundred twelve thousand dollars in the advertising of publications. And we're projecting a hundred thousand. The request of sixty-eight five is considerably shorter than that. Yeah. How does everybody feel about that? I think that should be out. 
I'm sorry, what was your question, Cy? Si? Um, under advertising uh, expense, yeah. yeah, advertising and publication under tourism, second line item, is if in 2022 through August we expended 112000 and our projection was 100000 to have 68500 next Over. year, when we use a lot of advertising and publication with people that come to us also, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I, I just don't know how everybody feels about that so that mm -hmm. we can let Cheryl know now so as she's doing this, she could. I think that needs to be upped as, I, as well as outside uh, contract services. Mm -hmm. Right. And if in the two current billboards, it, it, how much is two current billboards running us a year? And I think uh, Chris yeah, has been uh, looking at a couple, of, uh, two more additional uh, billboards. I think instead of adding additional billboards, we should take any additional money we have into digital marketing, mm -hmm. into Google ads mm -hmm. and things sure. like that. It's just you get so much more bang for your buck, and it's so much more targeted. Well, yeah. everything you say, Chris? Yeah, I, I disagree with that. We, you do get. The digital is definitely working and doing things that the cost on that is not uh, that much. Billboards, and I've got some facts and figures that I'm gathering on the, the effect that they do have. And it's just a you know, matter of opinion. You, you put together your your uh, mix of media you know, for, for promoting. Uh, I have found through Landmark, there is uh, uh, several good locations between Albuquerque and here. And then also between Amarillo and here, or Texas Panhandle and here, that uh, you know we we've, we've we've got a lot of things going on. We can't necessarily promote just the weekends that are activities. Trinidad itself is a big attraction, regardless of I mean just you no know, year round. And I think uh, one of the things that billboards do is will uh, direct you. To uh, to some of the uh, uh, electronic media, to uh, you know, to your website and different things, simple boards that put in their mind think about Trinidad. You know, we'll we'll come up with you know whatever to say on the boards, but it's something simple. Trinidad, stop here, here, dumb. You know, I mean, whatever. I mean, get something you know, classy on them. But we can we could do a 12 month campaign. Uh, start out with adding those boards because I've always said and, and a lot of people say as far as getting people to think about it before they drive through and see our beautiful little town put it in their mind that there's a reason oh Trinidad here it's coming up you know they they may not even remember that they saw the board but I've worked with billboards you know for 30 years and uh, have seen the effect that you can have with them as long as you don't try to put everything that you do in town on them you make them simple, make the, the idea, the thought stick. And uh, it, it's to take nothing away from digital at all. It's just that... Uh, and I don't think digital is that expensive. Digital is uh, cheap. It's yeah. cheap, very cheap. Right. So I right. don't think we need to take money for the billboard. I think we should just add a little bit more money for the wall. Well, and I think we and that's well, cheap. Instead of adding more for more billboards. I mean, I still have not seen the one in Monument, and I literally drive it almost every week. It's there. So it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. I still have never seen it. Well, I, and I have my whole car look for it every time we go through it. Have you seen a, a different advertisement from somebody else on that? Billboard? I mean, I've seen two of the digital billboards. I've just never seen one for Trinidad. Yeah. Um, okay. and, I, and I understand your objection to uh, billboards, and, and that's fine. It's that's but fine. it's that's basically your opinion. We can just I mean, I mean, on your this. opinion is good, but uh, you know, it's yeah. there are okay, a lot of people that do. And, and the way just for the tourism the trolley, Cheryl, is that, does that include the increase in minimum wage this year? Yeah. We have not touched yeah. um, wages. Yeah. We're waiting for the union negotiations. Oh, so they're gotcha. flat. Everything got moved over flat. Yeah. So and, and then the cost of the additional. Um, so for a dollar an hour this year. When it comes to the, to the walking center. I mean, finish my proposal if I can. You know, I would yep. like to propose an additional fifteen thousand guy to do words, and uh, you know, then I've, you know, I can get a really good proposal, and because I've already talked to the, the folks at Landmark about what they have available, okay. check them out, and I think I, I think they would help. You know, and, uh, just from experience and uh, from what the industry says about marketing people. 
Cheryl, with with the twenty seven thousand from Airbuds and the fifty thousand from the new motel, and it's the money you. that Just and the money that we're kind of building up, I would I would like to see more money added to each one of these line items. Okay, so we're at the sixty eight thousand for advertising and publications and then your billboards currently you do have contracts out with outfront media mm -hmm. for two of them for ten thousand dollars and then mile high is ninety one hundred dollars so that's your thirty thousand dollars in billboards um, are you going to continue those because if so I would recommend that at least increasing that line item to thirty thousand yes yes Okay, and then regarding advertising and publications, what do we want to take that to? Does that include digital? Or is that just print advertising? I think we have to take it to at least 100 since we spent 112 this year. And I wouldn't say that if we didn't have money in reserves, but yeah. everybody's just working so hard to make Trinidad successful right now. I hate to be the entity tell them. All these little ones that we've helped support, 500, right. 2,000, and all that. And I think this is the time now that we, we make this move for more things going on. Um, there, the postage, you're projected to hit 6,500. I would recommend increasing that to 6,500 at least. Yep. yep. The postage rates did increase. And then... Um, on the uh, on your request, you'll see. I mean, on your report, you'll see the van is posted as seventy two thousand five hundred, mm -hmm. and then you have your festival funding at um, eighty five thousand, and then bottom line, you're dipping into the reserves eighty one thousand. Mm -hmm. But if you consider um, the how much network. is the SUFA? Fifty. Uh, Thirty two. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So honestly, you're not dipping, well, if you wanted to dip into the reserves to cover the, the SUFA and the van at 100%, then technically you have, Twenty-two thousand to work with, and that would be completely taking this the van and Sufa out of reserves. That's what I think. And, and how about how about the wrap for it right away? I, what do you guesstimate a cost? Um, Marty, do you re, do you recall what what it cost to wrap the the, the trolley? The trolley. Gosh, that's way much bigger. Right. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a bigger unit. Yeah. Um, Five? Five thousand? I don't know. I have no idea. I would imagine a good thousand bucks. Well, it's yeah. going to be more than it. I'd say around five. Okay. I think five. And then yeah. you also have to consider operations. So you'll need a driver right. for and that and that's, van. And that's, and, and that's what I had said a few minutes ago. And right. insurance. And rental fee. And that's where I was going with those wages, too, is that, um, mm -hmm. that yeah. and I didn't know what the wages of any like Jeff at the Welcome Center um, this year. I didn't know what those wages are, but again, minimum wage moves way over a dollar an hour well, in we two are. months, and I want to make sure that we're treating anybody that works with you appropriately and not holding back on giving them a raise, on top of it already going up a dollar. Uh -huh. so, so our trolley drivers, we are proposing an increase in wages for our two trolley drivers. Okay. Um, so that's in discussion. And so, what are so that's what you have, two trolley, two trolley drivers. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think you'll need a third? No. Okay. Not Eight. full time anyway. What is minimum wage going to? Do you know? It, yeah, it is now twelve fifty three, and it's going to thirteen fifty six, almost fourteen dollars an hour. We pay them fifteen. The trolley I mean, drivers. Yeah. So I, I mean, mean they're at fifteen. Yes. Right. And so I would want to move them up because if fourteen becomes minimum wage or almost fourteen. It seems disrespectful for somebody that's worked years on end to be a dollar over minimum wage. Well, and you won't be able to keep them because yeah. they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. 
it's generally a, an extension for their summer because they're they're they've all been up to this point bus drivers during the regular season and then they take off take on the trolley driving as a summer as a summer job. I think I was going to mention that was a discussion the other night yeah. and our budget is that, you know, we had uh, a councilman who uh, was a different of opinion and own opinion than the rest of council. Uh, the balance of council was very, uh, <laughs> I guess, indifferent in that they felt like marketing yeah. Trinidad needs to be kind of a priority. Uh, because if we're going to be able to exceed our sales tax revenue to bring more people in, the marketing has to be part of this. So and that's a big part of it. Thank you, Mayor. That's such a good point. So we should go back to that line. I think the Mayor's right, and maybe try to dip more into Colorado Springs and the driving area for marketing this year. But marketing isn't just tourism marketing. It's also, right. you know, what Wally does in terms of trying yeah. to bring in new yeah, businesses absolutely. and identifying what businesses we need. And I mean, it's mm -hmm. multifaceted. Sure. And that's why I say I think that maybe this is the year that maybe you might need to dip into more into your reserves. Because we have to, to cover some of these expenses. Yeah. And, and hopefully that maybe in 2023 we'll see a change and recovery or begin to see a recovery overall. Mm -hmm. um, and then trolley drivers are paid fifteen fifty and sixteen dollars. Okay. okay. Thanks, Cheryl, so much for working on this right. um, uh, and giving us a place to even start from. So if with what Cheryl and the mayor just said, that we're going to advertising and publications. We probably need to, uh, if we have done 112,000 tracking this year, we should probably at least do 125,000 tracking <coughs> next year. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, increase, but be cautious, I guess. Yeah. So I would advise. Right. Okay. And then this is all... Um, wagered on you bringing in 50000 for the new hotel, which, I mean, I can increase that if you think you'll bring in more, but 50000 is that a good starting off point? Yeah, 50000 is a good starting off point. So, um, well, everybody wants a free room. We're, yeah, we're, gonna all, all, we're all staying in the first night it's open. <laughs> Clean your own sheets, change your own sheets. That's the one. Uh, so that would have you dip yeah, into reserves. I don't do that at home. I just buy things. Cheryl, on the local festival funding, I think we should actually try to increase that also. I agree. So what did you say they're going to dip into the, uh, how much? Um, it'll be the van and the SUFA plus an additional wherever we're going. Right now we're at $3,500. So, 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 um, uh, what were you saying about local festival funding, Tom? I think that's a good one. I think we should go to uh -huh. either seventy-five or eighty thousand. Well, we went at twenty-two no, eighty-five. Yeah, we are at eighty-five. Yeah. I'm looking at the wrong side yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, eighty-five is fine, I think. I say, I say we should up it. I think so. Too. To bring in more events. I agree. Okay. That's how you advertise the town. It's yeah. the reason why those towns that get a lot of what tourism. What if we took that to a hundred thousand? And then, is there any way we can encourage? I think we put ten thousand. Is there any way we can encourage some events in the winter, like some better Christmas events? That bring exactly. In the we need it. I and mean, the a fall event. Like right right now, the, the fall colors. You know. So true. You're so right. It's so right. I'll get that thing that I saw from the chamber that did it. They actually stripped it out, and then they go and say, if you come up with a great event the second weekend in February, we're looking for a great event, and then yeah, it will help. teams will not be advertised. You know, one way to look at that is that, you know, we, it is for you to, get to look into communities like Trinidad that have the same area. Like, we don't have the, the, the skiing. We don't have some of the other stuff that other winter areas mm -hmm. have. And maybe look at maybe other communities that are similar to Trinidad, what kind of that, where they're successful, mm -hmm. and what kind of events they might have. 
Oh, I know, like there's frozen dead guy days. Right. And there's, um, in Durango, they have snow down days. So it has nothing to do with the skiing. It's all in yeah. town. Yeah, and then two springs is the coffin race yeah, yeah. And just to bring people into town. Those kinds of things are fun. And they would fit with the quirkiness of Trinidad, uh -huh. something like that. But in in uh, Fruta, they have the dead the chicken like the chicken uh -huh. festival. <laughs> Does an arcade do something in the winter time, or is it more of the? You know, it's just you they, know. They, they do a ball or a they do a bowling event, don't they? They do a fall of uh, an early spring uh, they bowling raise, to raise money. Yes, they do. do Maybe we can encourage them to do something in in the winter and help them fund it. Okay, are we done with this now? Yeah. Okay, so just to go back over it, um, mm -hmm. we've increased advertising and publications to 125,000. Billboards are at 30. Um, I don't know, you're good with that because you have those yeah. three billboards. And we're I think we need to go to 45. I disagree with that. Dude, if, if we even consider two extra for the year in production. 45. And then, um, okay. And then 100,000 for local festival funding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that has you dipping into the reserves for the van and SUFA plus 33,000, well, 34,000 more. What's that total? Uh, what do you mean? You're, so you're overexpending by $142,000, okay. which means that's what you're dipping in your reserves. So, mm -hmm. And that's what those reserves are for, it's for years like now. Exactly, right. they're building mm -hmm. so much that you know you should consider purchasing. Well, and, you know, and, and I would say the not. traveling, I know it's a small white item, but the traveling and the training mileage I would really like to see that up. I would really like to see Marty or who support Jared or, or Wally or somebody to be at more of these events. And I know uh, uh, at the time in which Jonathan was here, he, uh, di he, he didn't have, uh, he didn't do what Marty does, which is a myriad of things. He was based as an economic development and tourism here. But he, he produced those big flyer things and stuff, and he would go to events and put Trinidad out there in front, and it might just be like a food event in Colorado Springs. Yeah. And you go there, and you go, hey, Trinidad's got, you know, and, and to have a lot more of that, Mayor, that people, you, you actually go to the, some Do of the events in Denver, and, that, and you set up the Trinidad flags, and I think those went bad after a while, but they were, it was a no, beautiful, I still use yeah, them. they're Actually, beautiful display. Jared took them to the outdoor recreation yeah. conference. Do we have a too. whole um, festival, I mean, I go to festivals all the time, I don't know what they're called. Um, Booth. Yeah, where they have the whole flyer, like, I mean, some of them you go in and they're interactive, I mean, you guys just went to the, mm -hmm. the tourism thing, I mean, do we have those that we can, that we do? Like a big a booth and event where we are there promoting. Mm -hmm. We don't have a booth. We have five or six standing uh, banners mm -hmm. that we that we use for different events. Mm -hmm. uh, I did take them to the college mm -hmm. and when when they yeah. did their uh, interns, Jared took them to New Mexico. And that that's, that reminds me, Marty, a while ago, and I think I think we did it. Is at the airport we started putting our stuff. In the airport slots, did we see They got rid that? of those, I believe. I they don't have those anymore. You mean in the concourse? Yeah. 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 They don't have so, those is there anymore. any advertising we could get at the Colorado Springs or Denver Airport for Trinidad? I don't know about Colorado Springs. I was just talking about DIA. Uh huh. Uh, I don't know. We can look into that. But DIA still has advertising, like the boards around in the they concourse. Have cases now too. Yeah. Well, I wonder if we could do something there. Uh huh. You know, um, but are there festivals and I mean like the governor's conference shouldn't shouldn't Trinidad have a booth there that we they should those are open them. mostly to vendors mm -hmm. um, they're not they're not open to DMOs are there others mm -hmm. events? other events yeah um, yeah I'm sure there is all we have to do is look for it. I do yeah. have a question here and this goes back to the reserves you know with what's taken out of the reserve you're going to have about three hundred and twelve thousand dollars left in reserve funds in Cheryl mm -hmm. One of the things that our auditor looks like looks at uh, when the when he does the auditing is that if those if those numbers are too high or if they're too 
Because what happens is if, if uh, somebody in the community wants to say, you have all this money, why aren't you spending it? Mm -hmm. Is that reasonable to have? Reasonable to have? It's, just, it's been building too much. So what happened is in 2020, um, yeah, yeah. We, you cut back on everything. Yeah. And then I think you added another 150000 in reserves because then motels and hotels We're came back going, online. But there was and going our, revenue, on. our revenue jumped up. So, so that's what happened. Normally their fund balance is between 150 170 so But 2020. So what yeah. I'm saying is you do have, you do have some money. By, by us conserving that one year also helped us gain. Right. So uh, this is going to take us back. But also, we're gaining a new motel and getting gaining all the revenue back in these air buds. So, but you, you still know, have a healthy reserve, right? You still have right. a healthy, you know, and, and and we are fortunate to be able to buy this van, add two kiosks, and if these kiosks work, we could purchase one or two more and add them to the city as to where we look. Right. I would like to see one. If, did you ever talk to anybody about what's this piece of property over here behind Jr's? The state, because I would like to see something down there. Then I know that, uh, that Steve is looking at that again. I know that Mike was looking into it when he was here. Mm -hmm. uh, I never went too far with it, but I think that's something that he is on his mind. Yeah. So I think it'd be nice if we had some charging stations right there with parking to be able to walk down to the park safely. That was you know. an issue that came up the other night too with charging stations with EVs and. Uh, Trying to maybe have some in town. Mm -hmm. I know that there that's are some. Yeah, no, that's I know really there's, there's some out there. Yeah. To me, that's. And they just stand around waiting at the parks doing nothing when they could be on Main Street ready to leave. Right. They, they, the the river. River. they have the river walk to yeah. walk. They have, you know. Yeah. So that is consideration right now. Um, there, there was one thing I just wanted to highlight. So, uh, City Council approved COVID pay for all of staff, mm -hmm. and it, that's. If you noticed, Welcome Center wages are overexpended. Mm -hmm. But if you look up above in the uh, revenue where the transfer in from the general fund, mm -hmm. um, the general fund transferred in the money to cover that COVID pay for the wel or with the Welcome Center place. Mm -hmm. Also, we transferred in the fifty thousand dollars for marijuana to um, help sustain the Marty salary. Mm -hmm. okay. So just that's what the transfer is in. I just wanted to highlight yeah. that for you. And then in 2023, there's another transfer in of fifty thousand dollars for Marty's salary. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was okay. discussed the other night too is that the concern with council across the board from all of our departments is to try to get everybody to stand on their own two feet, and that would include tourism, mm -hmm. so that some of these transfers don't have to take you know take place, mm -hmm. uh, so that our budget doesn't get so tight so yeah. we're looking at increasing different departments you know mm -hmm. costs or to get more revenue in mm -hmm. so that's something that we would like to see even with the tourism board hopefully that like i said that the bounce back will begin to occur in 2023 so where you guys know that fifty thousand maybe doesn't have to get transferred okay mm -hmm. so that's a good segue into my next uh conversation <laughs> with you so in spring of, of this year, we had, and I, I think we're done with Cheryl mm -hmm. for, for now, but you should probably hear this anyway. Okay. Um, in spring of 2022, the new tourism, state tourism director talked about refunding the welcome centers across the state. Mm -hmm. um, because we were in conversation about relocating the welcome center, the other welcome centers moved forward with theirs. Ours was kind of held back because we weren't sure where we were going, what kind of improvements needed to be made to the, to the uh, physical building, things like that. I also, and my tourism manager at the state level also didn't know this, but we can still ask for funding for our welcome center for next beginning next year. Mm -hmm. Their fiscal year is July to June. Uh, so, when I talked to my boss, to, to my director yesterday, they allocated eighty thousand dollars across the board for each welcome center. Wow, including that would be us, including us. Wow. So that would be so, state too. Right. So we can now make our ask mm -hmm. for fiscal year twenty twenty three. Wonderful. So we can 
allocate, well, it would end up being 40000 for our calendar year this year, I mean, next year, and then 40000 for 2025. So that's how it would roll out. That's great. Uh, and if you look at Welcome Center, the bottom line for the Welcome Center, it was at um, projected 164, 164 projected for the entire Welcome Center. So that would help us tremendously with operations, wages, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, do I build that into the budget or not? No, yet? not till next year. Well, 2023, but it won't happen until July. Right, so we should build it in. We should build it in. Is it, are you guaranteed or? Not guaranteed. Okay, so we won't build it in. Okay. <laughs> so we do have to make the ask. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll generate, I'll um, draft a letter so that you guys can take a look at it, the city can take a look at it, and so that we can move forward with our official ask. Here's, here's a question on that. Like I said, you, you got the ask, when will you know about the ask? They will build it into the 2023 fiscal year in July. That's when they will finalize their budget. So that's when we'll actually know. Not till next not, July. Not till next July. July. And do you have to make a proposal, or is you're already in? I, I have to make an. We have to make an official ask. Okay. All right. So are we? We're still on the floor, right? On our agenda. Yep. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. And I, this is when I'm going to walk out because I'm going to the doctor in Carl Springs. Okay. Thank you. That was a trip. Yes, I, I do. Glad you're back. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Um, we're on four, Tom. Marketing matching grants. Uh, so the marketing matching grant for CTO is in the works. Talitha is working on it now. Um, as you requested, it is for videography campaign. Um, after reviewing, oh, I'm sorry. That was after, <laughs> after reviewing expenses and what is going to be incurred with the campaign itself, um, several individuals have been contacted on what the cost would be for labor, for um, all the different things that go into something like that. And we project probably um, $45,000 is, you know, it's a conservative estimate. Um, so the ask would be $30,000 from the state. The tourism board would only have to put in 15,000 versus 20 that was actually approved for a total of $45,000. Um, and so we were, were actively looking at that. It is due October 20th. Talitha is actually working on a federal grant right now, so we're going to push it hard on Monday and finish that out and get it done. Mm -hmm. I did request letters of support from uh, several other organizations, Canyons and Plains, Scenic Highway of Legends, Chamber of Commerce. So we have our letters of support. We did submit our letter of intent to apply for the grant. And we also, Talitha and I met with the CTO Grant Review Committee, um, Elizabeth O'Rear and Kelly and others. So uh, it sounds promising. They said it was a good campaign. One of the things that they suggested was to uh, weave in uh, Leave No Trace and Care for Colorado so that the state office looks on it a little bit more kindly. I think it's a big sell for us once they see that we're campaigning along the whole state level of you know recreating responsibly then I, I think we have a good chance of getting this grant mm -hmm. fantastic yeah great thanks for all your work yeah you're welcome. fantastic as far as the RFP for the marketing entity we have not received any yet we I have received six different emails expressing interest but that deadline's not until next month so I'm hoping we'll get some applications by then it is out the RFP yeah oh yeah can you send it to us sure I did to, uh, was it just in our packet I didn't look through the packet. I'll look again
Phil, is there any updates on the on the new welcome center or anything? Well, what uh, we're doing there is we uh, talked to Steve, and what we're doing is we're looking at we have to go through and do a couple of things first, and one is to do a uh, an appraisal of the property. We have to do a uh, phase one environmental mm -hmm. uh, item on that because the text will be in there. Mm -hmm. Although that we know that uh, in talking to the owner, he said that it was all the tanks and stuff were cleared out many years ago. And he might have the paperwork, or he sh I guess he has the paperwork showing that it is uh, clean. But uh, there's actually two environmental things that would be done. One is uh, done through the uh, Colorado, I forget exactly what it is. But there's a phase one and a phase two. There's a state that will do one as well. EPA? The EPA might uh, do one as well. So there's a couple of things that have to happen first. Uh, and, and then uh, once that's cleared, uh, then they will work with the owners to see if they will accept the proposals and then move from there. Great. Thank you. So a couple of things. Um, the ad that you sent us, Marty, I thought it was really good, but I thought maybe it, when we do stuff like that, we can always put entrails or something. I want to have people remember well, whatever you want to change yeah, it. I no, just it threw that together real like fast because we need to get something and up it's on like Monday. Quirky, and I thought, you know, I want to make sure when everybody sees the ads, they remember that we have trails. Hiking, bike, we don't have to all add all that, but if you like to walk, if you like to hike, if you like to bike, just to say, and trails, and like, whoa, they got trails, let's look it up. So yeah, add a fourth I element to artsy historical quirky trails and trails or hiking or or and trails because I, I thought about yeah, hiking I, biking all that but then that's kind of because some people walk trails some people hike them they just want to know if you have them so so this is a little it's related to that but a little different the, one of the things that i think we have going for us here is our weather is amazing right yes and no. you can literally be on those trails 12 months a year and that is not the case in many parts of the You're state so and right. so that is something that i think we should really really Kind of promote, yeah. You so, know, yeah, I really like that, Marty. The one thing that I would like to to say is I would like to see the new space to create on that because that would help our downtown, and that's what really needs to help now is yeah. to that's why I started with artsy because we to, do not to, promote our arts community to showcase, nearly enough to showcase that building either <coughs> in the artist rendition rendition or the way it is now. I think. That on that billboard says a lot, well, especially I, for the shops downtown, and I, that's what I'd like to see on there. One of the things that I think, and I've heard this, and I, I'm not real positive, but I've heard that there are three different groups for the arts community. I wish they would all work together. Yeah, that, yeah. yes. And you know, if if or, you or. if you could probably get them all together, it'd be good if somebody from tourism would be representative on there. But um, so I, it, but in your regards to that, I've always wanted to do a snowshoe race in February. And you don't know if it's going to be... You would have to do it up in Kuchara. There's no way you could do well, no, it. No, 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 no. I mean, Except if there's no snow, you still got to wear your snowshoes. <laughs> so everybody wonders, kind of like the Walk of the Navajo it happens the first week in March, and it happened on our Main Street with Kit Carson, the Walk of the Navajo. And I always thought that would be a great thing, because you would never know if it was, if you got two feet of snow, or you were regular right on Main Street. You might well, damage your snow. Besides, <laughs> besides those, because the walk in the Navajo and the snow the sh thing and the pl polar plunge, if it could be more expate, those are winter events that would be good. But I was going to ask the city council mayor if they would consider adopting a flower for the city. And like some communities have tulip and tulip festivals, but I was thinking since sunflowers grow everyone here here and people would be so encouraged to grow sunflowers that if the city would adopt the sunflowers their local flower that we could have like sunflower days and people could drive around and it'd be an easy thing to grow and people could get excited and have reasons why they let their sunflowers grow in their front yard and sunflowers are made about happiness and people could come to town and the flowers down, downtown still could be could be like they are beautiful, but people could have extra pots with sunflowers growing, and it would be that you know we would have an adopted flower that would easy to grow. Well, put sunflowers a proposal sweet together and do a you know come to a either work session or just you know on the regular. Yeah, meeting. let me. I'll speak about it. And I'll get usually, some other information. Usually, but usually in the county when you get a lot of moisture, both sides of the county roads are loaded with them. Right, so 
And then I mean, it's, it's, it's sunflower days for two weeks in so Turkey. Sun, yeah, sunflowers is the symbol that, or I mean, the, the logo, the element that we use on the RPD, uh, Rural uh -huh. Philanthropy Days. That's our logo is sunflowers for this mm -hmm. region. Which brings me to, and I don't, I don't mean to cut you off on that mm -hmm. one, but Rural Philanthropy Days, there was a proposal that went out um, that was supposed to be out, I think, September 27th <laughs> for our interested communities to host Southeast Rural Philanthropy Days. We did that in 2014 here in Trinidad. It's typically held at Otero Junior College in Lahana, Lamar. Well, yeah, no, it started back anyway, in 1992. It did, but we've never hosted it. We only got, we, hosted we only it hosted it in 2014. Yep. So I got an email saying, you know, if you're interested, you should apply, blah, blah, blah. Then I looked at the deadline. So I got a hold of Nellie Stagg with CRC and asked her if it was too late for us to put in an application to host this year, or the 2023 um, event. She said that they're already in the closing agreements with um, Otero for it, but I asked her if she, since I just heard about it, if we could please be considered. I haven't heard back from her yet, but that being said, I'm asking as, under the assumption that the entire community would come behind this to want to host this. Right. I know for 2014, the, I mean, the city was involved, the college was involved, the, Every nonprofit, every everybody got even behind that event. Even if it's not 2023, Marty, 2024 would be. No, they do it every four years every in each, four each years. region. Oh. So it wouldn't be again until 2017. And it used to be on an even numbered year, mm -hmm. uh, but because of COVID, they, they canceled fell the behind a year. I was involved with that uh, from the beginning of that. Uh, before the 2014 started in 2010, basically. Yeah, we used to it was, for four years. It was, it, was a, it was a big undertaking. Uh, and yeah. uh, what time of year is that event? Usually it's in the fall. In the fall. Mm -hmm. See, that would and, be another and, and addition. To what was interesting is morning. that if uh, this was, I think it was the guy was the one that said in at the uh, space grade opening, is that our space grade project basically started derived from, from Southeast that, Rural Philanthropy Days. Philanthropy it Philanthropy did. Days. Um, and that was actually what I proposed to Nelly was that. We have this great venue now. We yeah. have the first space to create in the state, right. and we could host it in this building. Yeah. I'm just waiting to see what she says. Oh, that would be so great, though. It'd be, be nice. So yeah. great. It'd be nice. It's really so I'll keep you posted on whether or not Especially being held considered. in a place where it came out of one. What you'll have to do is uh, you'll probably have to raise close to probably hundred thousand dollars. And the reason why I know because I was in charge of the uh, raising funding. For the 2014, and we raised uh, I think close to sixty thousand thousand dollars. So I was I was chair of the fundraising committee then, and we had to raise sixty thousand, and we did. I mean, it went really yeah, well. but we had four years to do it then. We That's only right. have one. Right. But and I don't know why. Are better now that they were in 2014 for this region, right? Yeah. Economically, yeah, we're doing better than we were in 2014. Yeah. I would yeah. say, yeah. yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah. 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 And we don't want to lose it. That's the, yeah. We don't want to lose all those businesses that have worked hard to get there in the you last do, like, years. Leisure gravel rides through the sunflower through the sunflowers. <laughs> yeah. No, anyway, so don't get your hopes up. But I'm working on it. One more thing. Some of are happy. Marty had done a presentation yeah. to city council. I like the sweet peas too, though. And yeah. Yeah. Did you have yeah. any feedback from? From that, from any of the city council members. What was that again? The presentation. Maria did a presentation. I wasn't able to be no, there that I, night. I know the city council. Uh, they were. Uh, they really appreciated the uh, information that we received. Yeah, I just feel that she, what she put together, is everything that we do. You know, yeah. so. No, they and, they thought it was very well done. Long, long, but it was done well. I know, but we've done a lot. <laughs> That's yeah. correct. Had too much to report. That's what they said. That's okay. Meeting adjourned. Ten thirty-nine. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Thanks, Marty.